Today's notes are on inequalities in a triangle. The first theorem is the triangle inequality theorem that states that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. And I have in parentheses there, um, if you're checking whether three sides can be the length of a triangle, it's easiest to add the two smallest lengths first. So in this case, when I add the length of AB plus the length of BC, that must be greater than the length AC. If I add the length AC plus the length BC of the triangle to the right, that must be greater than the length AB, which is the third side of the triangle. And the missing side in the last example, it says the length of AB plus the length of BC, or I'm sorry, AC, must be greater than the length of BC. So when I add AB and AC together, those two numbers must be greater than the third side. If you know two sides, the length of the possible third side must be between the sum and the difference of the lengths of the two given sides. I can say that the third side is greater than the difference and less than the sum. So our third side as an inequality again has to be greater than the difference and less than the sum. So example number one, which set of numbers represents the lengths of the sides of a triangle? So if I look at the sum of the two smallest first, as I suggested, 5 plus 13, the sum is 18, and the difference, 13 minus 5, is 8. That third side must be between 8 and 18, or greater than that difference, so greater than 8, and then less than 18. So because 18 is not between 8 and 18. It can't be number 1. Number 2, our two smallest are 6 and 17, so the difference between 6 and 17 is 11. Sum is 23. Is 22 between? It is, so that works. Let's check 16 and 7. That difference is going to be 11 again with that sum of 23. And 24 is not between, so that's out. 8 and 15, when we add, we get 23 again. When we subtract, we get 7. And 26 is not between, so 2 was the correct answer choice. And number 2, it says a triangle has one side length of 12 and another of length 8. Describe the possible side lengths for the third side. Well, as far as our justification with math, we need to add and subtract those two side lengths. We get 20 and 4. So the third side must be between four and 20. As an inequality, I could say according to four and 20, the third side to say it between with an inequality is like this. If you cover up the 20, you've got four is less than the third side cover up the 4, and we're saying that the third side has to be less than 20. At the bottom of the page, um, the triangle exterior angle inequality theorem, since we know already that the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, that was our exterior angle theorem.
I can say that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is always going to be greater than the measure of either non-adjacent interior angles, which is 1 and 2. So using symbols, we know that the measure of angle 4 has to be greater than the measure of angle 2 if, again, it's equal to the sum of 1 and 2, 1 and 2. And we also know that the measure of angle 4 is greater than the measure of angle 1. Once again, because it's equal to the sum of those two. On the back, we have two theorems that deals with the length of sides and the size of the angles given two sides or two angles. The first one states that if one side of a triangle is longer than the other side, so in our case we have AB longer than BC, written as an inequality, then I can say that the angle opposite the longer side, so that would be angle C is opposite, this angle is going to be larger, I'm sorry, larger than the angle opposite the uh, measure of 5. So once again, if I know that AB is longer than BC, then I know the measure of angle C is greater than the measure of angle A. The next one dealing with the size of the angles. So if one angle of a triangle is larger than another angle, so A is larger than C, then I know the side opposite that larger angle is going to be longer than the side opposite the other angle. So if the measure of angle A is greater than the measure of angle C, then the side opposite would be BC. So the length of BC is greater than the length of AB. In a triangle, the longer side lies opposite the larger angle. The shortest side lies opposite the smallest angle. So number three, we're going to write the angles in order from smallest to largest. So I look for that shorter side. So opposite the shortest side is E. So angle E is the smallest. Opposite the longest side is the largest. So opposite 14, F is going to be the largest. And in the middle of 8 and 14 is 10, and opposite 10 is angle D. Name the shortest side. Well, we may need to find the missing angle before I can look at the lengths of all three sides. If I add up 90 and 45, subtract it from 180, we get 37 degrees. Now I know that is the smallest angle, therefore the side opposite, either xy or yx, however you want to write it, that's going to be the shortest side. Number four, in triangle ABC, the measure of angle A is 30, and the measure of an extra angle at B is 120. What is the longest side? So let's draw a picture. Since I'm going to be drawing an extra angle at B, I'm going to put B right here. So then I'll put A and C here. Angle A is 30, and an extra angle at B is 120. Well, I know the adjacent angle, because here I have a linear pair, is going to be 60, and those two angles are supplementary. And then in the triangle, I have the two angles, one is 30, one is 60. Since they all need to add up to 180, I know that angle is 90. So therefore, angle C is the largest angle of the triangle, so my longest side is going to be AB. So AB is the longest side of triangle ABC as it is opposite the largest angle. And the last one. In number five, we have triangle ABC. We know that side AB is longer than side AC, and BC is also longer than AC. So that tells me AC 
must be the shortest side of the triangle if both AB and BC are both longer. What is the smallest angle? The smallest angle is opposite the shortest side, so angle B is the smallest angle.